Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to make a or create a watercolor mixed media project. Okay, so let's review some of the supplies that you'll need that if you have at home, um, it's great. If not, I will be supplying a little art bundle with all the supplies that you would need to make this at the club and we'll have it available on the deck of the the boys and girls club for you to take and I will have it labeled kite mixed media project supplies and it'll be in a little lunch bag for you to take if you don't have these supplies um, at home I can make it easy for you to um, do this activity with the supplies that I can give you. Okay, but if you have them at home, great. Um, I did have some of this stuff at home and I'm gonna teach you how to make some watercolor paints because we are gonna be making a watercolor background and then we are gonna be using other paper and other forms of um, materials to make a mixed media art creation. Okay, so first you're gonna need, the best paper will be the watercolor or a mixed media paper. And it's pretty hard and very um, absorbent. And that's the best paper to use. If you have uh, some watercolor paints at home, that will be fantastic. If not, you can easily make watercolor paints by just using some a few drops of of um i'm having a brain freeze here um food coloring drops <laughs> um you just have to put a few i used an old plastic egg carton and i cut out some trays just because you can throw it out when you're finished rinse it out throw it out and put it in your recycling when you're finished rather than if you don't want to do dishes or mess anything up um, but anyway, so back to making your own watercolor, sorry, sidebar. Um, just put a few drops in um, a container and then add just a tiny bit of water and that's all you're gonna need um, to make the color that you want. And you can follow the directions on the back of the watercolor, I mean the food coloring box to make some vibrant colors if you don't have a tray of, of watercolor paints. Also, if you have watercolor pencils, you can do that. And then you can also use regular colored pencils to enhance and do things afterwards. Um, so that's those are some things that you're gonna need first. You are gonna need some glue, or if you don't have glue, you can use some tape. You're going to need maybe some yarn or some ribbon. You're gonna need some, you know, some scrap papers. You can get scrap paper um, or wrapping paper, some old pieces of wrapping paper. I found some old greeting cards that I saved. I cut the greeting cards kind of in half and um, I used them for, for different arts and crafts. So I had this one, it was an old greeting card for a birthday. I'm going to use that. I'll show you how to use that. You can use construction paper if you just want to use construction paper. I had a big pad of this. I found this in the nooks and crannies of my art supplies in a, in a box. So, um, and I think this is pretty old because I was looking at the price tag and it said $1.69 at Island Variety. And I think a pack of paper like this is not $1.69 anymore. <laughs> But um, it was kind of a good find um, that I came across. Okay, so let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a display of kites because in the springtime, it's such a fun time to get outside and fly a kite because normally it's a little bit breezy. Maybe it's not quite warm enough to go swimming at the beach or quite warm enough for certain things. So it's still fun to get out and to fly a kite. So <clears throat> we're just, I'm just gonna make a big collage or a big display of airborne kites 
for our mixed media project. All right, so to start out, when you're working with watercolors, um, like I said, you're gonna use your watercolor paper and it's very porous and absorbent and um, it withstands a lot of um, paint and liquid without making it all um, soggy as if you were to use maybe printer paper or newspaper or something like that. It would just rip and tear and crumble. So this is the, the mixed media watercolor paint is the best. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, I had two, I just have two paint brushes at home. I have a big one and I had a small one that came with my little kit, my little watercolor um, palette here. So first what you can do is, first what I like to do is I like to wet my, just with plain water. Oh, and please, I always forget, make sure your tabletop is covered, especially if you're working with the food coloring because it can stain for a while. You know, I don't wanna have, um, to be in trouble for having you stain up the countertop. Oh. Okay, so you're gonna just lightly, not heavily, put some water on top of the paper. Okay, so then you're gonna pick, so you're gonna pick a color that you like, a color scheme, you can pick anything. Um, obviously, if kites are flying, they're in the air, so you might wanna think about the colors, the traditional colors of a sky, maybe blue with white or um, yellow, the, you know, the sun rays or, or colors like that, but you can go crazy with colors, that's fine. If you wanna do, you know, like blues and greens and yellows, um, and I'll show you the one that I did before. I added some purples and stuff. So you can have fun with it. But it is kind of a sky. So I'm going to start with blue. So I made some blues with my food coloring. And I'm just going to dip in. And as you can tell, it pretty it saturates the paintbrush. And as you can see, I'm going to aim the thing down here. It's pretty dark. But you can spread it out and you don't even really need to dip it in more than that you can spread it out and you don't necessarily have to cover the whole paper the same color because the eye if you look sometimes in the sky the the sky is not always all the same color um, sometimes you know it's a little bit different you know striations of white mixed in there or lighter blues and lighter grays or dark grays so I'm just gonna do the blues. And then you can you can use the big, if you have a big paintbrush, a small paintbrush, and then start adding some other colors. You can use maybe yellow for the sun rays. I always like to add a lot of water. And if you want, you can use those watercolor pencils and add some designs in it. It's okay, it's, it is very abstract. It's not, it's not a very, um, deliberate picture so now I'm adding some purple in here from my palette I'm just adding some on just adding some here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some my my homemade food coloring watercolor paints and just add some colors okay so now as you can tell I made I filled up my whole paper with you know <clears throat> some diagonal strokes with my brush on my watercolor paint. If you want to spread out the colors a little bit more or you're satisfied, you can just leave it. But if you want to kind of make the colors blend more, you just add water and paint over it. And if you have a lot of patience, you can wait till it dries and you can add some darkening colors with maybe a black pen or with other color with a with a pen or or markers um it's up to you it's your creation okay so this was how this one just turned out right now so since i have to show you um a couple more steps with this i'm gonna go to the one that i did earlier that's all dry because you have to wait for your creation to dry before you move on to the next step otherwise you're gonna have maybe something that you don't want to have created okay so i'm going to just put that over to the side so here's the one that i did earlier it's all dry 
And what I'm going to do is uh, make, you're going to make maybe a little kite template. So I made just one out of some cardboard, some stuff that I found out in my recycling um, paper bucket. And I just traced or made like a, a kite shape. And what I did was I took some of my papers and I traced on the back side of my paper and cut out some kite shapes. So I have some kite shapes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put them on my paper. I have one from, from a greeting card that I used. You can use newspapers for this part. You can use magazine clippings, wrapping paper to make your kites. Um, but I'm just going to show you three, but you can fill up your whole entire page. Um, I'm going to do it long ways so that you can always have more. So I'm going to have a lot of people flying kites in my picture. Well, not really people, but we can only imagine the people below the kites, what they're going to be doing. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these kites on. Just a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. Position them on your sky, on the background of your, of your paper. I'm kind of doing it at a slant because a lot of times when you're flying a kite, your kite is not always straight straight up to the sky. It's a little bit out of slant. You have to run down the beach or run down the, the grass or <clears throat> the road to get your kite up high. All right, so now I have my kites kind of getting ready to be in flight. So of course, to keep our kites in control, we're gonna need our strings. And it's okay if your strings are gonna come off your paper. I kind of like that idea, going moving outside the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the bottom part of the, I mean the string to the bottom part of the kite. Okay, and it's okay, like I said, if it comes off and you can always fix it. And you, like I said, you can use ribbon, you can use string, you can use yarn, whatever you have at home. I had yarn, I had a couple of strands of yarn and you just cut Cut it to the size that you want. It's not an exact science. And I would suggest using the kits that I'm going to provide you. They're going to be bigger pieces of paper, so you'll be able to fit a lot of kites on your, on your project. Okay, so now I have my strings on here on my, on my kites. And if you want, you can have your strings. You can glue them onto your, your paper more like that if you'd like, or you can just leave them dangling off or you can secure them a little bit more with some glue so that they don't fall off at all. And then I like to make the little ribbons on the end of the kite. Sometimes they have like the little ribbons. So it's kind of like a little tiny bow tie. I don't know if you can see it, but I can always put some examples in the bags for you in the supply bags to put, and you're gonna glue that on your kite string a lot sometimes there's more than one of these little bow ties on the on each of the kites sometimes they go all the way down and they're kind of a fun little feature of a kite okay so then that's all you really have to do right there and then there you have it there's your beautiful your beautiful kites kites in flight and that's all there is to it. Okay, make sure that you um, save your pictures because I really want to see them when we all get back together at the club. And then also, um, you can always take a picture or have your parents take a picture of them and send them to me at Doreen Nantucket at NantucketBoysAndGirlsClub.org. I would love to see them. And, and hang them up in your house and hang them up in your room or hang them up on your door or give them to a neighbor who maybe needs a special hello or some you know, beautiful color in their life. So have fun with this. And like I said, I will have the bags available at the Boys and Girls Club on the front deck and it will be the mixed media kite project and have fun with this and i can't wait to see some of them
Thanks so much. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to clean up. And I will see you again soon. Take care. Have fun. Bye.